Hello friends. In today's talk, we are going to be discussing how to read the garbage collection log. Friends, the garbage collection log contains very vital information which facilitates you to optimize your GC performance. It enables you to uncover the production memory problems. It helps you to diagnose out of memory errors, right? So in order to read a garbage collection log, you need to have one. How to generate a garbage collection log? To generate a garbage collection log, this is the arguments you want to be passing to your application, right? If you're running on a Java 8 or before versions, this is the argument you want to pass and give the file path here. So whatever the file path you give, that's where the GC events are going to be logged by the JVM. And if you happen to be running on Java 9 and above version, this is the argument you want to be passing, right? Once you have enabled it, the garbage collection log is going to be generated. Now let's look at a sample garbage collection log. This is a sample garbage collection log. So for every GC event, one log line is going to be printed. So you, let's say you're, you're having a thousand GC events, thousand log lines are going to be printed. Let's see what is there in every single log line. Right? The very first element of a log line tells the timestamp at which this GC event ran. Here you can see this GC event ran on August 31st, 2023 at early morning, 1.09 a.m. And here it shows the time, the time zone. It is at a UTC, right? And next is it says 1.606. What does it mean? This means this event ran after 1.6 seconds since the JVM was started. That is after immediately after JVM started, after 1.6 seconds, this event triggered. And friends, there is two types of garbage collection events. One is the NGC, another is a full GC. What is NGC? Friends, in JVM memory, there is actually there is four regions. One is N generation, old generation, meta space, and then there's others region. And if it's an NGC, it runs only on the N generation. And the other type of GC event is a full GC. What is a full GC? If it's a full GC means it runs on all the all the regions in the memory, right? So you can see this is the first line. It's a NGC. The second line, it's a full GC. You can see the text, it says full GC. Right? Now it's an NGC event. Let's continue our walk through. What you see within this parenthesis, it says, what is the reason that it triggered? This GC event got triggered. It got triggered because of metadata GC threshold, right? So now the next part of the log line tells what is the size of the regions before the event and after the event, right? Here they say this is the N generation size. The end generation size before the garbage collection event was, you can see it is 545 megabyte. After the event ran, the end generation size became 18 megabyte. Boom, a significant of objects in the end generation has been reclined. What you see here, it says 2.4 GB. This is the allocated size of the end generation. What has been configured is 2.4 GB. And this is 545 was how much objects were there. In the end generation, once the event ran, it became kind of a 18 megabytes, right? This is what it is. And now what you see here is the overall heap size. That is what is the end generation, whole generation together. What does it add up to? Here it is 545 megabytes, the heap size. And after the event, it became like enough for 18 megabytes. And the overall XMX, what you configure is 8 GB, right? That's what it's reported. And now the next section reports how much time that this DC event took. Right here, you can see there is a user time, sys time, and real time. But for all practical purposes, you want to be focusing on real time. Real time is nothing but a wall clock time. That is, this event, this particular GC event, it took 0 0.02 seconds to complete. That's what it's telling. Right. And what is the user time and sys time? There are some corner cases, but very effective cases to use it. But I'll, I'm not going to get into the detail of it. But from a very high level, when one garbage collection event runs. It spends a majority of its time at the JVM level, but it also spends certain time at the kernel level, right? So amount of time it spends at the JVM level is this user time. And the amount of time it spends at the kernel level is this system time, right? Okay, now let's move on. This is the next event that it ran. The next event, you can see it ran almost immediately. You see the first event it ran after 1.60 seconds. Next event ran after 1.625 seconds, right? After a few milliseconds later, the second GC event got triggered. 
now this time it turned out to be a full garbage collection event full garbage collection event means it's going to run on all the memory regions in the application in the jvm and here you can see the end generation size before the event was 18 megabyte but after the event it became kind of a zero megabyte boom all the objects in end generation has been cleared out and now look at this since it is in full gc we are getting to see what is the size of the whole generation right here the whole generation size is reported it was like a 24 kilobytes before the event but after the event after the gc event ran the same generation size became like kind of a 17 megabyte oh wait a minute what's going on here garbage collection is about removing the unreferenced objects from memory why here the whole generation size is growing shouldn't it be shrinking it has grown from 24 kilobytes to 17 megabyte why this is happening friend this is happening because it's called as a promotion the objects have been promoted from the end generation to the old generation you can see the all the, all the objects from this end generation was 18 megabytes from here what happened was it has been promoted to this old generation so that's why the old generation size has grown right and now here you can see this old generation allocated size is 5.5 gigabyte right and now this this tells me what is the overall heap size there is a end generation old generation together there the overall heap size was 18 megabytes before the event and after the event it was 17 megabytes and the overall heap size the xmx was 8 gb and since this is a full gc it is also running on the meta space you can see the meta space size is kind of a 20 megabytes before the event and after the event also it is 20 megabytes because the meta space contains a metadata information there is a class definitions method definition that are required to execute our application But typically unless you are using kind of a groovy kind of a scripted languages there won't be much change in the meta space right okay and now this tells how much time it took you can see it took like a 0.4 seconds since it's a full gc it is running on all the regions it takes a little longer time whereas in if you see the earlier end generation end gc it took only 0.02 seconds this took almost twice right? because it's running on all the regions and friends there is a misnomer in the industry they say that eng gcs they don't pause your application it is not at all true eng gcs do pause your application but only thing is pauses for a minimal period because it's running on a smaller region whereas full gc full gc pauses for a longer duration because it's running on all the regions okay okay friends like this if you have thousands of events you have to go through each and every line to look what's going on it is kind of tedious right to read it manually and uh, they say as a cherry on top of ice cream this is not just a one format of gc log the gc log varies by who is your jvm vendor whether if it's an oracle hp ibm azure or open jdk and what version of java you are using and what type of algorithm you are using and what jvm gc arguments you are passing based on it a gc log format changes there is easily 70 80 different types of garbage collection log formats are available today see look at this this is a gc log format if you have a g1 gc algorithm enabled you can see this is just one gc event what used to saw as one line now it's printed in multiple lines but has more granular data more fine grained data as present here and if you are happening to configure the cms concurrent mark and sweep algorithm this is how your garbage collection log format is going to look and if you happen to be running on ibm jvm they printed in xml format xml structure this is how it looks If you're looking at a modern IBM versions. This is how its GC log format going to look. So still XML, but different structure. If you happen to be running on Android Dalvik, right? Android runs on a modified version of JVM. This is how its GC log format is going to look like. If you're going to run on a recent version of Android Art JVM, its format looks different. So you end up having different different GC log formats. So what we have seen is we have seen. Uh, few customers what they do is they have some kind of a custom shell scripting or a perl scripting to parse and read the plug the values from these log statements and then try to generate a report that is one option that you can do right um, it works but the other option is also there are some gc log analysis tools are available you can take your garbage collection logs upload it and see the results right here are some of the freely available gc log analysis tool for our discussion let's uh, let's just quickly show a gc easy right so here is a gc easy tool it's an online tool you can just uh, register and you can upload your gc log file 
let me upload this file which was a very unreadable cryptic file i'm selecting it and then i'm i'm uploading it right. once i have uploaded immediately it's going to it's it's going to generate the results right you can see here is a if any problems are found it's going to report it to you here it's suffering from a consecutive full gc suffering from a long gc pass you can see there is 402 gc events took more than 5 seconds how to reduce the long gc pass it gives you kind of a recommendation and in fact it gives you pointed recommendations pass this argument increase another argument decrease this value right it gives you kind of re recommendations here i can see all the generation sizes what is the throughput latency and how is my e usage looking right it's going on here i can zoom in and see the heap is going up and down up and down as gcs are running and how, how much time it is taking how much time it's pausing if you take a look at this example at 11:22 11 a.m an application got paused because of full gc and it took like a 7.62 seconds very long pause time right it has more details so friends in this video we learned about how to read the raw gc log format but however if you want to tune your gc performance diagnose memory problems you may consider attending my jvm performance master class the link for that is given in the description thank you friends